We took my car's headliner, wrapped it in black suede, and added 450 starlights, all for $150. Here's how we did it. Hey guys, hope you're doing well. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to do the ultimate starlight headliner. So not only are we gonna be adding over 400 starlights, we're also gonna be wrapping the headliner in suede, and a little cherry on top, we're gonna be adding starlights to the sunroof cover. This guide is gonna be good for any vehicle, but for this job, we're gonna be using my Ford Fusion. Now I do already have Starlight Headliner in this car, but the one that we're gonna be doing next is gonna be even better, so we're gonna be starting from scratch. This is the replacement headliner that we're gonna be using, and this is actually gonna allow us to go pretty in depth on this job without having to dig into the car just yet, basically until this is ready to be swapped in. And down here, we have pretty much everything that we're gonna be using, so let me walk you through what we've got. So first up, we have the black suede that we're gonna be using. I'm just leaving it in the packaging because I don't necessarily wanna get it dirty just yet, but usually when you order suede online, it comes in a roll to avoid wrinkles and creases. This, however, does not because it's just cheap Amazon suede, but uh, don't worry, I'll show you guys how to get those wrinkles out here in a second. Now, the reason I'm going cheap on the suede is because good quality suede can get expensive pretty quickly, and if you happen to mess up, you're basically just gonna have to eat the price tag and order another roll. This, however, was only about $50, so if I happen to mess up, it's really no biggie. I can just order another one and should be good to go. The next up, we have the actual Starlight Kit from Chin Lee, and there's a few different ways that you can get these. So the one that I got is 450 stars, which is actually 50% more than I have now because I only have 300 right now. And this also has the twinkle effect, which basically just gives the lights like a nice little glimmer so it's not just like a stagnant, solid light. And on top of that, this is also a 10 watt power draw, as you can see right there, which means it's gonna be the exact same as the kit I currently have in my vehicle. So whenever it comes time to install it, all I have to do is just swap the plugs. I don't actually have to worry about reconnecting any power cables. Now there are a few other options out there for Starlight kits, but I've had literally zero issues with my Starlight kit, and it's been multiple years at this point. But my favorite thing is that you can actually connect and control this from your phone and every single time connects in like two seconds, so I definitely wanted to go the same route. These last two things are for the headliner fabric. So this is actually to remove the fabric that's currently on there right now and get to the backing itself. And then we have this 3M headliner adhesive that's gonna be used on the other side of the suede to get it to stick. Being 3M, it is very high quality, and then headliner adhesive is very specifically what we need. And you could actually get this at Walmart, which I was very surprised by. Now I was quoted about a grand to get this job done, which at that price point, I'm willing to knock it out myself, but it makes sense because it is a pretty time consuming job. However, like parts and everything, I'm only roughly $150 in. So if you notice right here, we have the actual fabric and then some foam behind it. We actually wanna remove this to get down to just the bare backing of the headliner so that we can give the new suede the best possible adhesion. So that's what the actual drill attachment is coming in for but this should give us a relatively casual approach to it because you take this at an angle and it should just scrape it all up. You don't need it to be perfect because again, you're gonna be laying fabric on top of it. However, you don't necessarily have to do this. I've seen it done without actually taking the old fabric off, but I would definitely recommend it because we are gonna be poking holes through this going the other way. So you wanna make sure that you can get the best possible bond. And then once you have the old headliner fabric and glue and residue off, you can go about putting the new fabric on. And to do that, we're just gonna be using the 3M headliner adhesive. And then to wrap it up, we can do the Starlight Kit, which the basic goal is gonna be just to have just awesome cable management because that's what's gonna give us the most leeway so that we can have a working sunroof cover that can slide through. And the other thing that we're gonna be doing is rather than gluing them early on, I'm gonna make sure that we can lay everything down, kind of pull all the slack to this side that the ends are gonna be cut off anyway and just make it so that everything is just super, super formed to the headliner itself, which should give us the best overall finish. So this is our makeshift table and these are our makeshift safety glasses. So this might be a little bit easier than I thought because it seems like this fabric itself is actually detaching from the foam. So if I can get all the fabric off, it shouldn't be getting caught as much because I thought at this point the fabric would basically want to like just disintegrate in a sense but it is still holding its structure, relatively speaking. So if we can get all of it off, it should glide pretty smoothly. Also, I wanna check the time just so that I can track how long this actually took. I've been at this for about four minutes, it's 9.36, so we'll say we started at 9.32. At this point, I found out that the dome light for this headliner was actually different than the one that I had, which is pretty cool. 
So I'm basically just checking it out. So getting all of this fabric off was actually a lot easier than expected. And if anything, don't feel bad if you cheap out on the fabric that you're gonna use because this does not feel very high quality and um, you can kind of see it's, it's, it's not the fanciest stuff. Anyway, we do still have a good bit of foam left over. Granted, there are these areas where it did come off, but we're gonna basically be using the wire brush and just going through everything just to kind of make it nice and smooth and give it a nice little bit to hold on to. So this is already a productive start for not even being at it 20 minutes. Officially one hour in and this is where we are we're about 90% done I would say only thing is we're gonna need to do a couple more passes to get the more Specific areas like this right here is a little bit hard to get the brush in and then just areas like this that just have a little bit of leftover foam Then on top of that we do have to do this area as well Which is just the area that has this light that I'm assuming is like this version of the dome light but I want to be very careful because I don't want to scratch up this lens. So just kind of been avoiding that so far. But for only one hour of work, we're at almost an entirely blank canvas from what was a gross and pretty stained headliner. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the headliner fabric. We're going to lay it out, see what type of wrinkles we're dealing with and how deep they are, and then we can tackle them. Now, honestly, the wrinkles really aren't that bad. It's more folds from the packaging. So what we're going to start off by doing is putting stuff on the corners that kind of flatten it out, mainly get the folds down, and then from there, we'll actually steam this thing. We now have a plate on each corner of the fabric, and it's already looking a lot better. If you're gonna do this yourself, I would suggest doing this pretty shortly after you get the fabric, cause the more head start you can give yourself, the better. And you could actually probably let this sit for a couple days like this and be pretty set after that. So what we're gonna be doing is we're just gonna let it sit like this for a few hours, and then we'll bring out the steamer. Now while the fabric's decompressing, we're gonna prep the headliner backing. All we're going to be doing is sanding it down, not really for the sake of getting it smooth, but just to kind of get those excess particles off that are just kind of sticking off. Now it's not really going to be anything super intent or specific. We're basically just going to glide the sandpaper over. And you can see here we have these little particles coming off. We're basically just trying to get those off so that whenever we're actually laying down the glue, it'll stick to the piece itself, not to these little particles. And this isn't going to be necessary for like every single headliner. I'm just finding that this one does have a lot of these particles on it. Now a little bit more of what we're going for is say I run my hand here more specifically, you can see we have this stuff coming off on my hands. The goal is to be able to do this and not have anything come off. It only took about 10 minutes because again, we're not actually going super in depth. We're just kind of gliding over it just to get all those excess particles off. Next up, we're gonna use a brush and just kind of brush everything down from the top to the bottom, just so that there's nothing left and we'll be good to go. So I actually ended up leaving this decompressing overnight and I'm pretty impressed with how far it's come. It's to the point now where we actually don't even need to steam it. We can actually just get going from this because I did order more fabric than we're needing only because I wanted to do some other stuff as well. But the main thing is this like general area right here, I'm gonna cut out a section for the headliner and it's already good to go. You can steam it if you want to, of course, but remember whenever you're actually laying this down on the headliner backing, you're gonna be pressing and massaging it and giving it subtle stretches here and there, and that's gonna make it lay even more flat than it already is. But again, it's looking good. So with the headliner backing already prepped and this fabric looking great, we're ready to go. We can take this to the garage, get our cuts going and start laying it down. The actual fabric is 60 inches wide. And then I think I got like 90 something inches. I don't know, something like that. But the thing is, we're gonna cut a good bit larger than this because we're gonna be folding the fabric over to the back end. And that way we can get a nice secure hold. We also wanna give ourselves some leeway because we do have these little recessed areas in here that we have to stretch a little bit. So we'd rather have a little bit more fabric than not enough fabric. Now, because we do have a sunroof, we don't really have to focus too much right here in terms of like laying stuff down. However, we do have to focus on these edges. Basically, you're gonna to wanna to put a little bit more glue on the little curves and whatnot. So areas like here, areas that are gonna require a little bit of a stretch mainly because you wanna make sure it holds very securely. With the section of fabric cut out, we can start laying down the glue. So we're gonna be laying glue on both the headliner backing and the new fabric. Now the glue kinda of lays down like those old Spider-Man web shooters, so it's gonna take some effort to get full even coverage, but just giving it a few passes, you should be good. We're starting off with just the bottom half so we don't have to do the entirety of the headliner all at once. This definitely makes the job a lot easier. From here, we're actually gonna let it sit for a few minutes so it can get tacky before we start working with it. This is gonna be somewhat similar to vinyl wrapping, just that it's gonna be a little bit more forgiving because you don't have like super, super sharp edges, but this is gonna take some time. So if you want a Red Bull, right now's the time to get one. 
My goal here is to keep the fabric about centered so I can work my way from the middle to the outer edges. I'm also pressing the fabric down with an offcut of the suede. This helps to avoid transferring oils or any glue you might have gotten stuck on your hand onto the fabric, and it also helps keep a nice texture. They say you want to give it about 5 minutes for the glue to get tacky after you've sprayed it, which I did find to be the case after that I was able to kind of press it in a little bit more casually. You do want to give a good bit of focus to the areas like the roof handle section because those have some pretty aggressive angles that you do kind of have to lay the fabric at a very subtle stretch. But the thing is, that's the only area you actually really have to give attention to. It lays very easily over every other part of the headliner. For my first time working with it, it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So this half has been laid and is looking good. Now the main areas of note that you want to focus on are the little crevices, so where the little roof handle goes, this section right here, as well as that section right there. Because those are going to be the areas that are going to require a little bit more attention to detail. This flat section right here is probably the easiest part. We're not super worried about the edges right now because we are going to be folding them over. So as long as you can get it to lay flat in that general area, we're going to be cutting and just tightening it up so that'll be good to go. It's going to be the exact same with the sunroof section. Now for the roof handles, if you can't tell if you got them good, you can just go down here, check that little opening. You want to make sure that you have the fabric laid against the hole. So as you can see it right there with the glue on the back, that's when you know you've got it pressed up against the edge. Now this side's probably going to be a little bit harder because of the raised sections for the roof console but we will see how it goes. Starting off with the glue, you basically just wanna see if you can bridge the gap between the fabric you were working with and the fabric you are now working with. Basically just making it so it transitions smoothly from the back to the front. If you just shoot some glue in that fold, you should be fine. Then the roof console, I was worried about initially, but it was actually very easy. Being in the center, you don't have to give it too, too much attention. You just kind of lay over it and work your way down. Honestly, pretty easy. Then the rest of the headliner, exact same way you were doing it before. We have this other half now laid down and I checked the timeline, it was only 11 minutes. Now, I'm actually very happy with how I was able to get this, but because I did start with that, there is some tension right here, so we are gonna have to lay that down. But granted, not really big deal because we are gonna be flipping this over, making the cut of the actual sunroof section and folding everything over and everything will be laid down very, very flush just like that. So don't even worry about this just yet. Just wanna let you guys know that yes, my eyes are playing a little bit of tricks on me because we have about four different lights above this piece as well as that light right there. And I'm looking at these little sections like for the actual roof handle and I'm like, is it actually deep enough? And you're just kind of feeling around for it. And it feels good. There's just so much light on it that you're not getting the actual contours of the shadow. But if I come over here, you can see it a lot more specifically. Now the proper way to cut the edges is to basically take a knife and just kind of finesse along the line. I'm not going to do that, I'm not that good at it, so what I'm going to do is just kind of cut close to the line and then we'll flip it over and tuck everything away. So now that we got this thing flipped over, what I'm going to be starting with is this sunroof section. So we're going to cut out a big hole first off just to kind of make it a little bit easier. And what we're going to do from there is we're going to start with the shape that we're going to go for. So easiest way to do it in my opinion is going to be to do a triangle right here, uh, then just like a rectangle here, another triangle here. And the triangle you can kind of finesse it to where it'll have some curve to it and you're basically just going to give yourself enough fabric so you can fold it over easily to the point where it's going to be very very tight. We're going to make those cuts first mainly so after that we can put a ton of glue on the area specifically, press it down and it should be good to go. And yes, there's already some glue here. Didn't really want to section it off because I wanted to get this area as smooth as possible. But now we're going to be focusing on these little crevices right here, making sure it's all smooth. This is where we're starting with the cuts. Now I'm just going to start making some relief cuts to basically be able to fold over. Remember, you cannot put any of this fabric back. So you definitely want to make it a point to not cut too much. This is basically all that I'm doing. As you can see on the inside, we have this nice curve right here. And then we got these ugly little tabs over here. These tabs, actually, I'm using them to kind of pull so everything is nice and flush especially down here on the bottom. I'm not gonna worry too much about the center section just yet because the corners are gonna require a good bit more leverage. So there we are guys, the sunroof section is basically wrapped up, it's looking good. And uh, it's very smooth, granted these tabs are not the prettiest things, but they're on this side, you're never gonna see them, so no worries on that. Your main goal is just to get it smooth along the edge because that's what you're gonna see from the underside. So let's go ahead and flip it and see what it looks like. And here is the headliner right now. You can more specifically now see the sunroof section cut out, the roof console section cut out. It's honestly looking really good, especially for my first time actually working with this material. I'm really impressed with how it came together. Granted, it is a little dirty, but the biggest thing at this point, you wanna let it sit because a lot of people at this point usually tend to try to put it back in their vehicle, but there is still a little bit of malleability to the fabric holding on. So you wanna give it as much time as possible to just sit here and make sure it has the strongest bond possible. So what we're gonna be doing is taking it inside, laying it basically upside down where the fabric's on top, 
just letting it sit like that for a couple of days and from then we'll have the strongest bond possible mainly because we are going to be poking holes going the other way and we don't want anything to get caught or start lifting up and that's why for these roof handle sections i actually did not cut out the holes just yet for these the holes are actually really small so rather than doing like a little tab method i'm just going to cut out just a straight hole from the other side and to minimize any risk of anything being pulled or tugged or just messing with the fabric as a whole, I'm just gonna do that after it's already cured. So I did forget that I need to bring the sunroof cover down itself, which is this piece right here. And with that, the headliner actually needs to come down as a whole. So let me show you guys how to do that. It's not super difficult, it's just a lot of pieces. Thankfully, a lot of them are clips, but there's a few screws here and there. So you're basically just gonna need to assess what you have making contact with the headliner. So most situations you're gonna have a roof handle, you're gonna have your sun visors, you're gonna have a roof console just like this. Then the interior panels for the A pillar, the B pillar, and the C pillar in the back. And there's usually only three areas you have to account for screws and hardware. One is right here for the roof handles. You can see we have a screw right there and another one right there. If we move the visor out of the way, you'll see we have another screw holding in the little cap section that holds it down and the upper section of the seat belt has a bolt right there that's gonna be holding it in the center you don't need to remove the whole seat belt as long as you undo this you can basically pull this off and it'll come down so I was actually able to remove the sunroof cover without even removing the headliner entirely brought the headliner down and because this is on a track once that track is exposed you can basically just slide it out to remove the headliner entirely at least in a sedan you're basically gonna have to go through the trunk, which does take some effort because there's some interior panels and some ducting that you gotta remove. So rather than removing them, taking the headliner out, putting them back, and then repeating the process for the new headliner, we're just gonna leave this headliner in up until the new one's ready to go. So we don't have to remove everything and reinstall it twice, just one and done and we'll make the job a lot easier. And now we can go about the process to put the suede on this cover. Now that we've had the headliner sitting for a little bit, we are ready to move on to the fiber optic cables. So what you're gonna do first is you're gonna place little dots on the back of the headliner so you can kind of position where you're gonna want the stars to go. Now I'm using a blue Sharpie, but you can use theoretically whatever. I'm just going with blue because it's a little bit easier to see. And 450 stars sounds like a lot, but if you're sectioning it off, it's really not that many. So of the 450, I think I'm gonna do 225 here in this back section because it is the most uninterrupted section so theoretically it should get the most I'm gonna do 125 for the sunroof section which is gonna get us to 350 I think the last hundred I'm gonna do in various areas towards the front the last one I did I did put stars underneath the Sun visor which is a section right here but you really never see them because to actually have them be seen you need to have the Sun visors down at night which is few and far between honestly so I would suggest just putting those elsewhere. We have all of these dots in blue. We have a line down the middle so that we know where we're gonna orient the cables, half on this side, half on the other side. You can also see here on these plastic pieces, I made some red dots, cause the goal is also gonna be to drill through those and add some starlights there. Cause these plastic pieces are basically just like spacers to my understanding. So it's not super important if they have little holes in them. This kit actually does come with these drill bits to make the job easier. So what I'm gonna be doing is taking this to the garage, attaching these to the drill, it's kind of zoning out wherever I see a dot, making a hole. I want to reiterate, this is not hard, it's just gonna take some time. When you're drilling these holes, the only thing you really need to think of is trying to keep the angle straight just so the cables have an easier path to follow. Now the glue says it dries in about an hour, but if you are adding starlights, I'd suggest trying to at least get a full day of it sitting before starting this step. And just for the record, if you're worried about seeing the holes or whatever, you can see them right now, but as you see, they start to disappear as you know you kind of realign everything. It's basically just some of the material from the other side gets pushed through so it makes you see it. As you can see right here, cleans up. Now here we have the fiber optic cables and if you notice, it's all coming from one origin point. It's not like two separate sections, which is gonna make this a lot easier because what we're gonna be doing next is getting some zip ties and we're basically gonna section it off because when you think about it, you're gonna need a certain amount of slack to go from the headliner to the module itself, which is gonna be about three feet in this scenario. And then from there, we're gonna section it off into three sections one piece for the left, one piece for the right, and one piece for the sunroof cover. So we've got our initial three feet right here at the zip tie and more tedious part, we're gonna separate them into different sections. We now have it split in these three sections. So what I'm gonna do is start pulling it out of the sleeve and basically continuing with the zip ties just so we can keep a general orientation, but a lot of the zip ties are gonna be removed so that we can lay everything out and then we can start filling in the holes. It took some effort, but we got it situated for the most part. So we have our three sections of cable, as you can see, and hopefully this gives you a little bit more perspective. But over here is the C pillar, which is, well, it's metaphorically a C pillar. This is where the module is gonna be. And you can see from here, it feeds to our three different sections. So we have this one section going all the way for the, everything on the left side, this one for everything on the right side, and then this one right here in the center is for the sunroof. 
what we're gonna be doing is feeding the cables through the holes. We're gonna start at the top and work our way down. However, we're not gonna glue anything just yet because we wanna make sure we can route these cables in a way that keeps them relatively pressed against the headliner. Now this is the more tedious aspect. You're basically taking an individual strand, feeding it through the opening, and just trying not to tangle anything. It's not complex whatsoever, it just takes some patience, so I'd suggest putting on some NFL throwback and just tuning out. We've got one of the three sections done, and aside from the cables occasionally not being able to find the hole in the fabric, it's going pretty smoothly. We do have this front section right here, which I did want to kind of give its own little extension because it's not that many, but this way we can actually route it a little bit easier so we know that these specific cables are just for the front. Whenever we're actually tucking everything together, we can bring them a little bit more seamlessly with this other pile. So now we're just gonna flip to the other side. So you can see all the cables. We have half coming from this side, half coming from this side. The center section for the sunroof we're gonna do after the fact, but what we're gonna be doing right now is we're actually gonna be sectioning off these cables. So you can see we have kind of a mess down here, but this is all actually just the slack. So what we're gonna be doing is starting to section it off. So we're gonna start here we're basically gonna compile all the cables so that we can route them. And we'll be basically gluing them in position because we want all the slack to be on the other side because that's all gonna be cut off anyway. So we want these to be nice and formed to the back of the headliner. So as you can see here, we have this right section of cables pretty zip tied up and looking good. We have two sections, this one main section right here. And then we have this other section right here that's gonna be going towards the front. Now, instead of just gluing them so that they hold their position, we're also gonna be gluing them pressed down so that we can actually get the cable to stay flush onto the back of the headliner. You can see it right here. So while there's these dollops of glue holding it in position, there is a little bit of a tail that basically presses them down to the headliner. So you, if you look down at the distance of all these other ones, they're all relatively flush. So it's gonna give us a really nice, easy way for the sunroof cover to move because there is some clearance. As you can see, the sunroof cover like outer section is not flush to the bottom right here. It is just above it. So as long as you can glide over this, it'll be good. This is the more notable aspect that's making this Starlight headliner much more cleaned up. All I'm doing is pulling the slack through and getting the cables flush to the back of the headliner. Some get tangled together, which is all fine. That's the reason you don't place the glue just yet. You're just pulling through on the underside to clean up this side. Then when you're happy with the positioning, you can place a dollop of glue on the end and that will hold it very securely. Making good progress for sure. As you can see here, we just wrapped up the main sections of glue. Probably gonna come back and just glue some of these down so they're just a little bit more flush but it's all looking good on both of these sections. And we do also have the driver's side cables routed through. Uh, it is worth noting that it's nothing fancy. It's basically just zip tied in a few sections and the glue is underneath the zip tie just to kind of hold it a little bit more securely. Really nothing special about this, just kind of going about it. You can actually see down here all the slack of just the other end of the Starlight cables, which is basically just the price that you're paying to have it be flush on the other side of the headliner. And as you can see, I am leaving a little bit of slack on these just so it's not super, super tight because we don't necessarily need it to be like stretched out or like super, super aggressively pressed. We just want it to be in position without having a ton of excess that we're gonna need to account for after the fact. So that is the back of the headliner all done. All that's left now is the sunroof section, which should be a lot easier because we don't have to worry about routing all these cables or anything all we need to do is actually get them to the end and then from there we can work on the slack so that whenever actually sliding it back and forth it'll be functional but it should be a lot easier uh, we're basically just going to give it a little avenue to go through right here just against this little divot and from here we're going to attach it to the sunroof cover and we're going to give it enough slack so that whenever we're pushing this back it can move very freely once you've got everything glued down you can go ahead and start cutting off the excess from the underside of the headliner you don't necessarily need to do it now, you could theoretically also do it whenever the headliner is back in the car. But for this specific scenario, there is so much extra cable that we don't want it to get caught when we're reinstalling the headliner, so we're just going to go ahead and remove it now. And you don't need a specific tool either, some nail clippers will work just fine. Hopefully this gives you enough of a visual of just how much slack we're dealing with here. And this is even just the actual sunroof cover. The other ones have a lot more slack, so all you're going to do, take your nail clippers, just come to the edge. Just cut it like that. It's really easy to do. Shouldn't take you very long at all. It helps to already be holding on to the slack just so that whenever you're like cleaning up, you don't necessarily have to sweep up all these extra strands on the floor. They're already in your hands. Now how short you want to cut the cables is entirely up to you. If you go super flush with the headliner backing, you won't feel the cables and you can run your hand across the fabric pretty enjoyably, but it makes it to where some of the lights aren't as vibrant in certain angles if they're shorter than the fabric. Then flipped, if they're about level with the fabric, you'll see them easily, but you'll feel them easily. I'd suggest doing the latter and cutting more to find the sweet spot for you. Let's just 
test it out real quick. The stars are looking awesome. And one thing I do want to point out is that not all of the strands are the same size. So some look a little bit brighter, some look a little bit dimmer. I really like that because it adds a little bit more depth to it. And if you look a little bit more closely, like say you're looking at this light specifically, you'll see it's kind of going back and forth between different levels of brightness. That's the twinkle effect. And uh, up here, I did add a little heart because this is the passenger side. And I did say that you actually don't see lights underneath the sun visor very often because to see them, you have to have the sun visor down at night, which I personally never really do, but my girlfriend does a ton. So I wanted to do this for her just so that whenever she pulls the visor down, she can see that little heart. Just a nice little touch because that's her spot. Right now, it does look kind of bland just because the way that the camera's picking it up. But actually, if you unfocus, you actually see some of the colors that are popping out. It looks really, really nice and vibrant. And I'm really happy with how this is coming together. So now we can go ahead and reinstall it. The headliner's been installed. Granted, I still need to button up like everything, but I do want to get the first startup on camera. So here goes. There's a little bit of a gap here just because this B pillar does need to be pressed up and it'll hold it together. It's not really worried about that, but the lights are looking absolutely awesome. And then Yvette's little heart over here with its nice little glow. And I do want to point out the functionality of the app because it's honestly really, really nice. So it's right there, my smart LED. Opening it up and it is already connected. And you can obviously go whatever color you want. So you wanna go red, so you wanna go that light blue. But in my opinion, I think it looks best if you go towards the center with white because white light is obviously the combination of all colors. So you actually get a good rainbow of colors that doesn't really look like it's just a gradient. It looks like it's just random colors left and right because that is how the orientation of the starlights work. I usually like to do white and then just pull it down towards the purple blue section just a little bit. And I get a really nice gradient there that I'm really happy with. And then here in the back, you can see a really nice rainbow of the stars, but I'm gonna unfocus it a little bit just so you can actually see the lights a little bit more specifically because again the way the camera picks them up isn't really doing it the most justice but it's just this nice cascade of just twinkling lights that i think looks awesome and then on top of that the fabric feels awesome which i'm really happy about because this is honestly a pretty simple upgrade but it has a really big effect so absolutely loving that we still got some work to do but the headliner itself is done so i'm happy about that and i do want to let you guys know i did fix the ac idle it was actually a very simple fix Turns out all I needed was a new ambient temperature sensor, fixed the entire thing. It was basically reading where it was 50 degrees basically all the time. And if it reads that, it doesn't see the need to actually make the AC cold. So it would just blow the outside air up until it get going. Very easy fix and honestly very cheap fix. So happy about that. Like I said, still got some buttoning up left to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock it out off camera. So I'm gonna call this video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your week and I'll see you in the next one.